marketing profession is good at talking at people. We're not very good at talking with people. And one of the key things I'm going to try and get across today is that especially in a social media environment, we need to start thinking about marketing a different way. That marketing becomes a two-way conversation with our customers rather than a one-way broadcast of messages. And think about that from your own point of view as a customer. How many of you like to be receive broadcast email messages? How much attention do you pay to television advertising? All these traditional marketing channels are declining in effectiveness. My interest in this area started about 10 years ago when, when I read a book by somebody called Nikam. The book was called The Customer Differential. And there was a quote in that book that said, the first challenge of the 21st century is to master the changes that come with customers being in control. And what the book was about was really that we were seeing what we call a power shift. A shift of power from suppliers to customers. And because of that, we had to change our thinking and the way in which we, we undertake a marketing. Now, if that was true in 2001, it's even truer today because of social media and web 2. If I'm buying a laptop, thinking of buying a laptop, I will go on to a customer review website and check the customer reviews. How many of you have used TripAdvisor? Yeah? So if you're booking a hotel, who do you listen to? The brand message of the hotel or the reviews of customers? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I've got lots of examples of that coming up. So essentially, the foundation of customer management is an understanding or an acceptance that the business environment that we operate in <coughs> is changing. And it's changing because there's a power shift. A combination of market and customer economic and technology drivers are leading to a shift of power to customers. I won't go through all of these, but just, just think about these bullet points here in terms of, of your own companies and your own organisations. Do we operate in a marketplace that's turbulent and uncertain? Yeah? If it's no one ash cloud, if it's no the threat of international terrorism, it's the 20%, 25%, 40% cuts in public expenditure. Yeah? We operate in an environment that is totally unpredictable. Customer discernment. Let me ask you a question here. Would you agree with the following statement? Your customers are becoming more demanding. They're expecting things faster, cheaper, personal, customized, and personalized. Yeah? So customers are becoming more discerning. <coughs> yeah? Global competition. Do we operate in a marketplace that's very competitive? Yeah? Think about the venue today. How many other venues could you have chosen for, for this seminar? Short product and technology life cycles. What, what do we mean by that? Think about this question. Is the product or service that we provide better than our competitors? How many of you think you supply a better product or service than you? I'm going to ask you another question. Do your customers think that you supply a better product or service? That's the issue. 
Yeah? <clears throat> There's lots of competition there. Declining effectiveness of traditional approaches to sales and marketing. How many of you have done an advert, a leaflet, an email newsletter, and then you've been disappointed with the recovery that you got from that? Yeah? These stupid customers, why they're not reacting and buying from us. Yeah? Now think about it. Because the customer's been inundated with similar types of messages and, and all the rest of it. The, I'm going to look at the 80 trend rule in a few minutes. The impact of technology. Technology is revolutionizing the way in which we do business, both in terms of internal processes and internal systems, but also the whole kind of social media thing which we'll talk about in a moment. From a customer management point of view, what does the 8020 rule mean? Basically, 20% or 80% of your turnover or 80% of your profit is generated by 20% of your customers. Now, it might not be 80-20, it might be 75-25 or 85-15, my maths is correct, yeah? But not all customers are equal, yeah? You've got a, a group of customers that are <coughs> your most valuable, your most growable customers. And they're the ones that you don't want to lose. Now the message there is quite clear. One of the big mistakes that a lot of companies make is that they spend so much time and put so much resource into constantly chasing new business. And often that is at the expense of the service that they provide to their most valuable customers. And if some of those customers leave, it has a disproportionate impact on your business. The foundation of customer management is really that diagram there. And the reason why you need a good customer management strategy and a good CRM system is explained in that diagram. And basically what that diagram shows is the lifetime value of a customer. The value to your organization of a customer over a period of time. The best way to illustrate this is a very simple example. Okay. So what you have is you get the profitability of the customer on the vertical axis and you get time scale on, on the horizontal axis. Tell me what that shows, first column there. Okay. The reason for it is acquisition cost. Yeah? But what it shows is that when we acquire a new customer, What's the profit on that customer? <coughs> Negative or only marginally positive. Yeah? And why is that the case? Because we've got customer acquisition costs, the cost of our advertising, our marketing team, our sales team, etc. Et <coughs> yeah? But what happens over time, assuming it's a high value, high growth potential customer, is that the profitability of that customer increases over time. Why? Acquisition costs are an awful lot more if you're dealing with an existing customer. Existing customer will often pay a price premium for a higher quality service or product, so they'll move from say to the next level. Referrals I've been touched on it. Who's the best salesperson you can employ? It's a totally satisfied customer who, I, who made recommendations and referrals on your behalf. 